Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Generals Admiral. Thank you for being here today. I particularly appreciate your service. I'm the proud father of two sons uh, who have served in Iraq, one Army, one Navy. Uh, and I, I just know of your leadership, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful. Additionally, I'm very grateful my former National Guard unit, the 218th uh, Mechanized Infantry Brigade of the South Carolina Army National Guard, uh, led by Major General Bob Livingston, served for a year uh, in Afghanistan. And, and um, all of you were so helpful. And uh, the people of South Carolina are so proud of uh, their success in working with the people of Afghanistan. And General McNabb, I have to point out that we're a joint service family. Uh, my nephew has just completed uh, his service in the Air Force uh, in Iraq. And so um, uh, thank all of you. Additionally, uh, as, um, I want to thank you for coordinating our allies. I had uh, breakfast this morning with the Defense Minister Yaroslav Baska of Slovakia. And the people of Slovakia are so um, uh, proud of their service in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the Defense Minister was pointing out that they are uh, adding to their uh, commitment to ISAF. And, and we appreciate countries, uh, the new members of NATO, such as Slovakia, uh, Bulgaria, Romania. As we are into um, the hearing today, uh, it, something that I find interesting, the new media really has made it possible for the American people to know so much more uh, about what's going on. And General Petraeus, a, a question was submitted uh, via the uh, Hask Republican Facebook uh, from uh, Jason, J-A-Y-S-E-N, of Los Angeles. And the question is, is the civilian surge in Afghanistan having the desired effect, and what additional civilian agency originations, uh, USAID, uh, state agriculture, uh, justice, are needed? Congressman, uh, Jason's asked a great question. The uh, civilian surge, if you will, to parallel the military surge is certainly ongoing. Uh, I think it's, it has almost tripled the number of civilians that were there, again, if you go back, say, to the uh, end of 2008. Uh, each of the components that he has mentioned and a few others, state, AID, agriculture, I'd add DOJ, FBI, uh, virtually all of the different elements uh, engaged in the executive branch uh, play a part in this. And for what it's worth, uh, I know that Secretary Gates and Chairman Mullen and I have been among the biggest champions for actually beefing up those components uh, of our executive branch because, of course, if they can't do it, uh, then in many cases individuals in uniform uh, end up doing it. And that has been the case, as you know, because of reductions in uh, uh, AID and so forth. An area, by the way, in which we need to expand as well is this whole information operations area, public diplomacy, as State puts it. And that's something, as I mentioned in my opening statement, we're working very closely with the Under Secretary uh, Judith McHale to, to do just that. But uh, that the surge is ongoing. There is better partnership than uh, I think any of us have ever seen. Uh, particularly in regional command east of Afghanistan, where there's literally a civilian counterpart for the regional commander, uh, Major General Scaparotti. Uh, and in fact, it's Dawn Liberi, a long time she was working for CENTCOM, in fact, phenomenal uh, AID uh, individual. And then all the way down at the brigade levels uh, and, and so forth as you work your way down. That is crucial because, again, this is all about unity of effort. That's why we've had these changes in command and control arrangements as well. But on the civilian to military side, that's critical also. And a final note on that, Ambassador Holbrook and I, in fact, are going to uh, chair a review of concept drill back brief to us uh, from the respective civilian and military leadership uh, of the U.S. elements in Afghanistan here in the, in the course of the next month or so. Well, again, thank you so much. And